morning, everybody. Once again, I have an empty deck behind me. Empty skateboard, some call it. I'm about to go put something else on it. Head back home. Crosby and I know there's a shortcut to go around town I just forgot about it and missed my turn so we're gonna go through town thank you Nice little town here. So we're going up to a town called uh, Hibbins, I think. Hibbins, Minnesota. From what I understand, there is a load of uh, like fabricated or precast steel that I'm picking up. And that just goes back to our yard in Manitoba. So I'll be back tonight. And uh, it's Thursday when I'm filming this right now. So tomorrow's Friday. I made myself available to work through the weekend. Uh, this weekend is a long weekend upcoming. Uh, it's Victoria Day weekend in Canada, celebrating uh, Queen Victoria. So uh, we'll see if they find me something or not. If not, I'm okay with that too. I mean, I, we have a, a family gathering on the Monday that I'd like to go to. It's for Mother's Day, it's a week late, but I've also had a lot of time off and I need to keep my wheels moving. So I told them, if you have something, I'll take it. So we'll see what they come up with. I mean, I don't find my own loads and I'm happy to let someone else do that because I don't want to talk to brokers. <laughs> I don't want to negotiate with them. I don't want to deal with them. I'm very thankful that there's a crew back at the office that does that for me. I don't have to talk to anybody. All I do is I go get the freight, load it up, secure it, bring it to where it's supposed to be, get the paperwork signed, send that in, done. So they do get a cut out of the rate for that, but to me, that's worth it. Just to save me those headaches. Can you imagine if I had, like, I mean, I could do it. I could, and then I book my own loads, but, that adds oh a world of headaches that I just I got too much else going on in my life right now it's just nothing that I really want to uh, put my not a situation I want to put myself in and I really like the the people in the office as well too they do really good like really good the sales team there and uh, the people like, getting us these loads they are really good at what they do and they're they do a much better job than I could do if I was doing it for myself. It would take me a long time to hone my skills to get that good. Oh, there goes my future motorhome. Do you see that? Yeah, about 40 years. That bad boy will be mine. <laughs> Beautiful day though. Uh, sun's not shining, but it's not raining and it's not too hot, so it's a good day. Just finished tying everything down. Came out of this muddy yard over there. I wanted to get out of that mud. Here's my load. 
Now it looks like steel, doesn't it? It's not actually, it's rubber. You see how that is bending in there? I thought it was harder. Like I thought it was, that part was steel. I knew there was some rubber on there. And I started tying it down. I was like, oh, no kidding. It's rubber. Rubber and that steel and that steel, it's all bolted together. But my straps are going over the rubber. So I guess I didn't even really need those corners on there, but I did it anyways. You can see it sort of dips down there, see? That's good. So all of this together is about, I think, 38,000 pounds. Not very heavy. There's six big, big pallets, eight foot by uh, six foot, I believe. Big old pallets. We're taking these just back to our yard in Manitoba. I'll be there tonight. And then they are continuing on to British Columbia with somebody else. So we'll get there tonight yet. Uh, get my equipment off so the next driver can get his equipment on probably tomorrow. And uh, then we go home for the weekend. I got some plans, a trip planned on me for next Monday. We'll be headed out Monday afternoon. I'm excited about that one. It's another special one. I've been having a couple of these thrown out to me. They're throwing me a bone here and there all the time, right? It's another special one, a place that we haven't gone to in a long time. So we've already gone to uh, New York City recently. We went down to Laredo, Texas. And we went down to Arizona. And where do you think the next place will be that we're going? I'm excited. So it should be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. It's a bit longer than usual again, too. So I don't know what usual is anymore. I mean, usual for me, I guess, is because I'm a regional driver. I'm on regional fleet, but I leave myself available to them if they want me to go further. If I need to cover a load that's very important or something and they don't have very much for me to do around here, I say, well, I sort of raise my hand and say, well, you can send me further if you want to. Keep me busy. Take care of some of your stuff on, on long haul division. So I sort of get passed around a little bit. But uh, that's by choice. I, I like doing these. Uh, so I don't want to say where we're going yet. It's going to be a surprise. It's going to be a surprise. I almost said it. Just about said it. Actually, you know what? I don't know if this will give it away or not. To those of you who've been watching my channel for long enough, for 13 years or so, I'm delivering to a place and going to a place that's pretty far away that I have never been to before. It's in North America, obviously. I've never been here before. I don't want to give away too much about it. That's going to spoil it. But for those of you who have watched long enough, you know all the places I've been to. I, I, I've been to every province of Canada and every territory, except for Nunavut, north of Manitoba. There's no roads leading there. And I've been to every continental US state, except for Alaska and Hawaii. But I'm going somewhere that I haven't been before. Now I've been to every... No, I don't want to give that away. Don't give that away, Josh. So I want to know your best guess down below in the comments section. Where do you think I'm going on my next load? Where have I not been to yet? Where have I not delivered yet? In my whole career, never ever have I been there. I don't think even in my life. I don't remember if I went there with my dad when I was a kid or not. I know I've been close to it. But I don't think I've actually been to that place. I'll let you guys throw, it, throw around your ideas down below in the comment section. I'm not going to admit to which one's right or wrong. You'll just have to see next week. Maybe I won't even tell you until we get there. I mean, I'll just tell you what direction we're going and you guys can guess the whole way there until we actually get there. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Anyways, I got lots of time to get back, so I think I'm going to do my walk here in town. Uh, I'm not going to park here, though. I'm going to find a different place to park. Quickly get my walk behind me, get it done for today, and then uh, book it on home. we got to cross through from Pemina, North Dakota into Emerson, Manitoba. That's where we'll be crossing the border, and I plan to be in our yard sleeping there tonight. It'll be pretty late, so I won't be going home yet. It'll be too late. I'll wake up the whole house if I go home. So I'll sleep in the truck, 
I have an appointment for tomorrow morning to get my steer tires rotated because uh, the passenger side always wears different and faster than the driver's side. Let's see if you can tell the difference. See, look at this tire here. This is the driver's side, right? Get a good look at that. Okay, now we're going to go to the passenger side. Get a good look at this one. Can you tell the difference? The passenger side always wears a little bit faster and a little bit differently because usually when you're uh, you know, on the road just like this, the road is always angled so that water runoff goes to the shoulder, right? So your truck is always sitting a little bit leaning to the passenger side while you're going down the road and that puts extra weight and pressure on that tire so it wears out a little bit quicker. So I'm just going to flip that one to there and that one to there tomorrow morning so I'm ready for this, this next mystery trip. It's not a mystery for me. I know where I'm going. You don't know where I'm going. I used to think people were like making weird faces at me when I was talking to a camera when they drove past me like this. I used to get all self-conscious about it and worry about it. At this point, I realized, yes, they are giving me weird looks and probably muttering weird things about me under their breath. I just don't care anymore. <laughs> I don't care. <sighs> okay. Let's go find a place to park. Let's, uh, let's do our walk here in Hibbing. Did I say Hibbins before? We're in Hibbing, Minnesota. I've got a couple of Canadian geese families down here. They're just over the hill over there. Steering clear of me. Because I'm so scary. Ah! I'm not going to do anything to you guys. Don't worry. So that couple there has got three little babies with them. And the other couple over there has got five. Oh, and there's more behind over there. Oh, so they live in this little pond down there. Oh, that's nice. Have a good day there, eh? Eyeing me down. You guys ever uh, encountered Canadian geese before? <laughs> They're brutal. <laughs> Uh, they don't mess around. <laughs> they'll attack you. You got like little teeth inside their inside their bills too. They'll, they'll bite you. <laughs> ah, if you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. Once you get too close to them, then they won't leave you alone. But then it's on. Man, if one attacks you, that gives you the right to defend yourself. Just be careful. Don't start a war with the geese. They take it very seriously. They'll all come after you. Oh, a couple more geese over there. You guys realize that you didn't go far enough, right? You're not in Canada yet. You're still in the US, man. Got three little babies with those two as well. Did you know? You probably know. The Canada geese mate for life. And if one dies or gets hit by a car, something bad the other one just lives alone forever it's a little bit chilly it's probably because of the recent rain that they had everything is so pretty wet but you know Brainerd had most of their trees all green already these ones are budding but definitely not as much this is Brainerd. Sorry I talk about that a lot. I just find it fascinating how spring comes at different times in different regions, like even so close to each other. Brainerd's only two hours away from here, yet it was completely green already. And here in Hibbings, nothing. Huh. We've got more greenery at home at our house up in Manitoba. Ah, I find that all fascinating. I don't know. Like seriously, how do, how do the trees know like to go to sleep for the winter lose all their leaves and in the summertime how do they know that it's time to you know, grow new leaves am i the only one that thinks of these things i'm a weird guy i'm the only one who thinks of these things and look at this look at this lawn So how many of you have started walking since I started walking? I'm trying to encourage people to be more active. Have any of you started walking every day too because you saw me doing it? 
let me know down below. I hope I can move everybody in a positive, more healthy direction. 2.99, just under an hour again. And three miles. There we go. We made it happen. Now, we got a buggy. So we're taking US Highway 2, westbound towards Interstate 29. I'm gonna stop in Grand Forks, and they're flying, Jay, on the south side of Grand Forks. Grab some fuel there, possibly a shower, and then we'll head north. My load hasn't cleared to cross the border yet. Hopefully it will by the time I get there, but we might be stuck sleeping in Pembina, just south of the border, overnight. here, grab my fuel. Now I'm going to run up to Pembina, North Dakota, 
my border clearance is still not ready. They're still not, uh, still haven't cleared me. So I'll go sleep at the gas tracks, which is the truck stop about a mile south of Canada. We'll spend the night there and we'll deal with it in the morning. quite at the border we stopped before we got there but the gas tracks in Pemina before we got there load didn't get cleared in time so there we sit this happens every now and then I couldn't really have gotten any further and I wouldn't have gotten home any sooner if I would have crossed the border at night but uh, it is what it is we'll just cross in the morning and we'll go home from there but thanks for hanging out with me today, everybody, in a little short little trip around Minnesota. It was fun exploring Hibbins. Hib Hibbing? Hibbing. Hibbins? Hibbing. I keep forgetting what the town name is called. It was nice exploring that a little bit and getting to see a new area that I haven't seen before. And yes, there is a big trip coming up next week. Uh, somewhere we haven't been before. And I got a bit of a riddle for you that I'm going to share with you as we get closer to it. I want to see if you guys can figure out where I'm going before I actually say it. So stay tuned everybody, make sure you subscribe down below, hit the like button if you like my videos, that helps me a lot. A comment down below goes a long way to help me with the algorithm and I love hearing from you. Uh, very often, uh, I just see the views add up on my videos, it's nice to actually hear from you. The person behind that little view that I get there. If you want to take it one step further, if you're a hardcore viewer, you can always click the Join Now button. For the price of a cup of coffee, you get early access to all of my videos. And also you get kept in the loop about what's going on if I don't have a video posted that day. I always let you guys know what's going on there. But take care, everybody. Stay safe out there. Be patient. Use your turn signals. Keep your eyes on the road.